Stuck in the tub. Years ago in the 90s, I was a security officer in a busy downtown hotel. I was radio dispatched by the switchboard operator. One evening, I got a call. There was a loud knocking and screaming coming from the top floor of the hotel. I went to the floor in question and loitered around for a bit, but didn't hear anything and reported back as such. About 20 minutes later, same call, same response, same outcome. An hour later, I got the same call and a second complaint of sobbing on the same floor. I responded to the floor, determined to get to the bottom of it. It took me literally putting my ear to each door for a couple of minutes at a time, carefully listening. The floor had only one vacant room, so the process took a while. I did one whole side of the floor and was about halfway back the other side. I was listening at the door and was just about to move on when I thought I heard a very quiet whimper. Then nothing. Then I heard it again. The shower was running in the room, masking most sounds. Maybe it was a TV? I knocked and identified myself as hotel security. The floodgates opened then and a woman's voice called loudly for help. I opened her door to find the safety latch was thrown. I told her I'll be right back and I went to get the breaker bar we keep in each floor's housekeeping area. I also called for my backup, not another security officer, but the engineer on duty. The engineer arrived at the door a few seconds after I returned and together we snapped the security latch and entered the room. I called out that I was hotel security and the woman said from the bathroom, I'm in here and I need help now. We pushed open the bathroom door and peered cautiously inside. The woman was a big girl, quite overweight. Who am I kidding? She was jive fucking enormous, 500 pounds easy. She was lying down in the tub with the shower spray hitting her right in the face. She had slipped and fallen backwards somehow, trapping her arms behind her and because of her weight and girth, she couldn't get back up. She could only move one leg and could kinda kick the side of the shower, making the knocking sound. She had been that way for about 90 minutes and had exhausted the hot water tank for that floor, so she was getting ice cold water right in the face and was shivering violently. When a woman of those dimensions shivers, thinks, well, shake disconcertedly so. That which has been seen cannot be unseen. My colleague took a towel and laid it on her in an attempt to give her some dignity. It took all the towels to do that. My colleague and I tried for several minutes to lift her out but couldn't get a good grip, either too flappy or too wet or too wet and flabby. We decided we needed major reinforcement and called the fire department. They arrived in under 5 minutes, covered her with the comforter from her bed and gave her heated oxygen. We thought they would get her out in short order, but they had the same flappy, slippy issues we did. For a while, there was talk of cutting the side of the top off, but eventually they were able to get some straps behind her and four burly men pulled her out. I was in a guest room, but not the bathroom, but I swear I heard a soft pop when she was finally extricated from her porcelain prison. The EMTs put her on a gurney and she was taken to hospital where she spent the night. She called the hotel the next day asking us to bring her some clothes, which a maid picked out for me from the belongings in her room and I offered her a ride back in a hotel car. She was very embarrassed, mortified actually, and would not make eye contact with me the whole trip back to the hotel. She tried to tip me 50 bucks when we arrived, but I politely refused. She checked out later that day and we never heard from her again, until a couple of months later we found out she had written a letter to corporate singing the praises of the maintenance man and I about our professionalism. The general manager was so appreciative he gave each of us all expense paid weekends at the hotel and a 250 bonus. I was single at the time so I never used my gas pass but 250 bucks was a lot in those days. I think I spent it on hash, rum and pizza. Two events enter, only one heart attack leaves. So this was very long time ago, about 30 years ago actually. Any dialogue is a memory of a memory, but hey, it was interesting. I was a blacksmith and sometimes security guard at a historical village. It has been shut down for a very long time. We would have events there all the time. The field had music events for big crowds. Lola Palosa played there and the tent would have smaller ones. Victor Borch played there. He was awesome. Sometimes events would take over parts of the village. Some events took over the entire place. 
We had powwows and civil war reenactments and all kinds. It was a great time in my life. One weekend, we had a historical reenactment event portraying the time between the revolutionary and civil wars. The French word trapping and training time, not sure anymore what that period is called. So you've got guys in fur and leather walking around with muzzle loaders and huge knives, all talking, competing, and enjoying the heck out of themselves. The ladies were all in dresses and there were plenty of kids running around playing tag and rounders and such. It was honestly lovely. They set up first day and were planning to go through and leave Sunday evening, Monday morning. We had a few hundred of them there. I was in full historical gear, but as a staff member, I was working the entire weekend. I walked the grounds, kept everybody orientated, shooed the kids away from staff only areas and generally was having a wonderful time. Everybody kept feeding me, talking, and just being wonderful. Sorry, I just really enjoy these events. Well, Friday rolls around and some cars pull up to the parking area. Out step some well-dressed people with wine glasses. I'm puzzled, but hey, to each their own. They are terribly excited and tells me they are here for Jazz Fast. It starts later that day, they were just dropping a car off and going to breakfast. Huh, I thought that was next week. Let me check the calendar. Oh, crap. I went running, I informed the French and Indian warfare trapper and trader event. Yes, that's the name, coordinator, what's happening. And here comes the other event coordinator. Why are all these people wandering around in historical gear? Yeah, it's weekend, we do French and Indian warfare trapper and trader event. No, it's jazz fast weekend. Oops. See, while the primary area for each event were separated, both events counted on having the rest of the village to set the scene. The historical event was doing canoe races in the river and food was being sold at the concession stand for those who weren't cooking for themselves or for convenience, etc, etc. Jazz festers had wandering string quartets and wine tasting areas and such like scattered all over the village as well as food at the concession stands, etc, etc. Obviously, both events were pre-planned well in advance. Also, obviously, neither of the event planners had checked the calendar well. Oh dear. We just decided to keep both events rolling and let everybody know. For the jazz fasters, it's extra historical color. For the historical crowd, it's amusing and hey, free wine. Until an older lady dressed to the nines drops her wine glass and collapses to the ground. Her husband shrieks incoherently, all heads turn, including mine. I'm already sprinting over to figure out what's happening and fumbling for my radio to call for help. Late 90s, I didn't have a phone. Three French and Indian warfare trappers in full furs, leather, muzzle loaders, huge knives are already on her. One's doing vitals and one is starting CPR and one is pulling a foot long knife, pouring something over it from a flask and brandishing it wildly. I can open her up right here. Needless to say, the husband shrieks again. He's about to punch one of the fur-clad assailants when I grab him and explain the guy at your wife's head is Jimmy, a local paramedic, the one doing CPR is a cardiologist, and the one with the now sterile knife is an amazing distiller and a cardiac surgeon. Stop freaking out and point out if you got a friend here. Hand them your keys and have them bring your car to the hospital. She's going to a hospital. The ambulance arrives and the EMT comes pouring out. The knife-wielding surgeon in first letters boots to his ankle and a rifle strapped to his back invades the ambulance, screaming various drug names and demanding their EKG machine. Jimmy, the fur-clad paramedic, looks up, waves at his friends on the crew and tells them to do whatever the crazy man says. He's Dr. Jones from Mount Sinai. They comply, take immediate directions, and this lady is stuck with more needles than a porcupine and wired up with a service rack worth of electrodes. She's in the ambulance and out there in less than two minutes, and with all the fur, leather and everything going along with her. Except the guns. I collected those and held them for the medical personnel when they got back. Long story short, she lived. Without those guys being there that fast, she would not have. It was a massive block, but she lived. When a drunk enacted revenge on himself, I used to be a bouncer. Situation is, we have three bars on two levels. The top level is kind of the club. One of the nights I got called to the club, a guest had called one of our waitresses a bitch. For me, that is enough reason to remove someone, tell them to sober up and come back another night. 
So I told this guy I needed to talk to him. He listened. I told him not here, but downstairs. He followed and I told him to follow me to a better place to talk. He followed me all the way. Then I told him he was bounced from the club. I told him he was welcome another day and went inside. By that time, the guy realized he had just been bounced, was outside and didn't agree with it. We had a door and two windows beside that. He was outside and I was inside smiling at him while he was calling expletives at me. After a few minutes, he walks off and we thought that was it. It wasn't five minutes later, he's back again, but this time he has a rock. He starts cursing and swearing again and throws the rock towards me. I'm sitting behind the window and of course try to avoid the rock. And here comes the revenge for calling my barkeep a bitch. Our windows weren't made of glass but of laxin. And laxin doesn't break. The rock bounces back straight to him and hits him in the knee. The sight of that was so funny that me and the other bouncers burst out in uncontrollable laughter. It was just so funny. A guy trying to hurt us with a rock hurts himself. He's not getting up, so while he tried to hurt us, we are not animals. We go outside and we try to get a guy up, which doesn't really work. He couldn't walk anymore. So I end up calling an ambulance, still half laughing, to get him to the hospital. That was a weird call. That was the last time we heard from him. So those were the stories for today's video. If you enjoyed this and want to watch more videos, then click here for more stories or go check out the info cards in the right corner for more videos.